my name is Craig Ritchie and I'm Professor of Psychiatry of Ageing at the University of Edinburgh uh, and I'm also the Director of Brain Health Scotland as well as being Chair of the Scottish Dementia Research Consortium. Uh, my background has been working both as a clinician, as a psychiatrist, uh, people with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of neurodegenerative disease for gosh the last 20-25 years uh, and at the same time working almost you know 50-50 with my academic work which initially started with um, clinical trials, uh, but has, I guess, maybe in some ways changed also into a more sort of public health policy, epidemiological approach to some of the issues we're facing, particularly around midlife risk of dementia. So I think risk, risk factors are what we've discovered, if you like, through uh, primarily epidemiolo epidemiological research um, as being important um, in the the, the, the onset of a, of a dementia syndrome. And I think these were best articulated uh, most recently in the Lancet Commission report, where they identified 12 risk factors that were important in, 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 in driving the, 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 the probability of an individual developing dementia uh, in later life. Risk profiling, if you like, is working with the individual and saying of those risk factors, how many apply to you uh, and to what extent do they apply to you? And I think this is a critically important distinction because on the one hand, you're talking at a kind of like a public health epidemiological level about risk factors, but we have to make sure we can apply that knowledge and that evidence to the individual so they can make changes to their lifestyle, particularly probably in, in early adult life, in, in, in midlife, that will reduce their risk of developing dementia. And risk profile will be a very active process by speaking and working with an individual, doing various assessments and tests and say, this is your profile, this is your risk signature that is unique to you, because therefore the intervention that, that we will work with is, a, is precise and it's and and personalized to you. We call these uh, personalized prevention plans. The, the, the low hanging fruit in some ways to use that analogy, some, some of it's been picked already, because we know that um, you know, cardiovascular disease diabetes are risk factors for dementia in later life. And with the work of you know, colleagues in, 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 in you know, the diabetes space and the cardio, cardiovascular space, there have been a lot of initiatives around smoking and alcohol use and obesity, metabolic syndrome, which have been going on for, for 20 or 30 years. So, so, so we can piggyback on some of those initiatives uh, and, and, and add into the, 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 the work that brain health is also an important outcome uh, in terms of improving your, 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 your cardiovascular well-being. We often uh, say that, you know, what's good, heart, good for your heart is, is good for your head. And I actually think given the, the importance of your brain relative to your heart, we should be saying what's good for your brain is good for your heart. The slightly higher um, uh, fruit to pick, if you like, or those things which are potentially more specific to brain health. So in that regard, we talk about things like hearing loss, uh, social isolation, uh, depression. And one that's not on the list of the Lancet Commission report, but I think most people agree is critically important, uh, which is sleep. Uh, so I think those are the things that we need to maybe create new initiatives, both at the public health uh, level, but also at an awareness raising level of the importance of social isolation as a risk factor, stress and depression, hearing loss and sleep. The recent pandemic, I think, has shown us how social isolation in particular and depression have just gone through the roof. By design, almost, we've been socially isolated uh, across the world. And from a personal perspective, uh, working as a clinician, I've seen a dramatic acceleration in patients of mine minds decline uh, over the last 18 months because of that degree of social isolation. So it's, it's unfortunately a very sort of living experiment of what we kind of knew already that social isolation was a risk factor for dementia because we're seeing it um, real time, if you like, with, with the pandemic. Cognitive reserve is a really interesting concept because of course it, um, it, 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 if you like, it prioritizes um, cognition as part of this of these brain diseases, okay? So cognitive reserve will, 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 will maybe delay the onset of a diagnosis when that diagnosis is exclusively based on cognition, which it is at the moment, okay? 
But cognitive reserve, as far as I'm aware, doesn't actually necessarily indicate what's happening at a biological level. It's just that because you may be better educated, you've enjoyed lifelong learning, you're able to survive with a degree of disease in your brain for longer before clinical symptoms emerge. I think what we're trying to do is actually reframe where they're saying Alzheimer's would have wanted us to be, uh, you know, over 100 years ago, that these conditions are brain diseases that have cognitive symptoms rather than cognitive disorders. And to that end, we need to understand why these risk factors that we've talked about actually do um, um, accelerate or initiate the brain disease. Now, how we then can maintain somebody symptomatically, if you like, so that the, di so the impact of these brain diseases is minimized through education, through maybe some other, other, other you know, cognitive training, et cetera, then, then, then that is, you know, really critically important. But I think the risk factors interaction with the brain disease is probably, dare say, more important. Mm -hmm.